On today's Visual Studio Toolbox, Julian's going to show us what's new with DevExpress's desktop components. You are going to want to see this. Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me today is Julian Bucknell. Hey, Julian. Hey, Robert. How are you doing? Great. Julian is the CTO at DevExpress, and I think uh, everybody knows or certainly should know uh, that DevExpress is one of the premier component and control vendors. Uh, we love them. They've been around for a very, very long time. And today we're going to talk about some new things. I, I love these shows. I love when I have you guys on to talk about new stuff. Um, and we're going to talk about WinForms and WPF controls and components, right? That is exactly it. We're going to be talking about user interfaces for Windows. You guys still make and still sell those, yeah? Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> it's SP.NET Core. And let me tell you, no. we, uh, we have a lot of people who have, I don't want to call them legacy apps, maybe traditional. Well, legacy you know. is shorthand for runs the business, right? It, right? Exactly, exactly. And corporates. They tend to uh, prefer, uh, you know, their standard Windows applications. Yes. So, yeah, absolutely. So let me let me start. Um, right. We have. Um, oh, before we actually start, let me uh, th throw up a little uh, teaser, shall we say, for um, for everybody. So what we want to do is um, to give away a free copy of our Code Rush for Visual Studio. Um, we're going to keep this offer open for uh, a couple of months, so until June 30th, 2020. Download your free copy of Code Rush for Visual Studio. This is our, um, our product which helps you write your code, be it WinForms or WPF or even ASP.NET or JavaScript. Um, so please do have a look and uh, have a look and download Code Rush. Dev wow. Express uh, giving away oh, free stuff in this show, man. If you got stuff, free stuff to give away, we're gonna have you on more often. <laughs> as you as you basically said, DevExpress, we engineer hundreds of UI components across many different development platforms. We offer reporting, data analytics, business app frameworks, uh, even web regression testing software, and so on. And there is no practical way that I'm going to be able to demonstrate it all. And so I just want to show you a few quick demos to illustrate what we can and cannot do uh, with regard to Windows. So basically, we have over 180 different components for WinForms. And as I said, there's no practical way to get to everything. So I'm just going to demonstrate a couple of uh, major controls. And the first thing I'm going to do is one that we are very famous for is our data grid control. OK, so first things first, let me uh, open up our demo center. Let me just uh, quickly close um, this. And our demo center uh, has the various platforms that we support. So it's part of our standard distribution. So if you wish, wish to uh, have a, a try, you can download our 30-day trial. And uh, the demo center will be as you see here, I'm going to open up the data grid. It's a view-based architecture. As you see here, it obviously can display uh, tabular data, what you would expect from a grid, and uh, with a bunch of data shaping and filtering type options. But our grid is more than that. And uh, let me move to the card view example to show you. Um, as I said, it's a view-based architecture. So you can present your information to your end users via several different presentation metaphors. Cards are one option, like we have here. So I can skip through the cards for each uh, set of cards here. Uh, let me switch to the file manager demo. File manager works in exactly the same way as 
um, you'd expect from um, a file manager, but it's still the grid. We're showing a file explorer type demo here. We can show you tiles, and obviously those tiles can be uh, modified in certain ways. So that you could, in this case, we're showing, um, you know, kind of realtor type uh, information here. And we have a couple of other views, but now I'll jump to the Kanban board. This is <laughs> something nice. we've added recently, and we just updated in version 20.1. So you can display information in a Kanban board type uh, tiles, essentially. Uh, the tiles can incorporate images, like we have two here, and so on and so forth. You can move these between um, different columns. And, and this is a grid, right? This is this the grid, grid. yes. Wow. This is just awesome. another display or a view base for the grid. So um, I can't type today, so I'm just using a, a, a simple example. Hello, world. Um, so, yes, uh, this is our grid. Uh, it's loaded for bear, as someone Crazy. once said to me. And before I leave the, move that, before I leave the grid, I do want to show something we introduced a few years ago and that something um, is indicative of how we approach our user interfaces. Here's a grid. It's obviously full. It's a kind of outlook kind of inbox type thing. The grid is the, um, the list of uh, emails there. But notice there's no scroll bar. Obviously, the grid is longer than the screen until I hover over the grid. So here's the scroll bar. Once I hover over the grid, the scroll bar appears and I can move the uh, thumb. If, I, if you want the old star scroll bar, you can just skip back to the Excel demo here, and there is the there old stuff is. scroll bar. Yep. Yeah. Now, time for a quick demo of our spreadsheet control. So let me jump over to the spreadsheet. The thing about spreadsheets is your end users are probably very familiar with Excel. And once they know all about Excel, they're probably going to be very familiar with our spreadsheet control. In fact, our spreadsheet control, what you see here is the control. Well, uh, I hope this is old data. It shows Microsoft at $28 a share. <laughs> I hope that's <laughs> fake data. <laughs> that was the um, the share price when I left Microsoft, I think. OK. And then, yes. <clears throat> and higher these days. <laughs> so if you drop a uh, spreadsheet control on the form, you will actually get not only the spreadsheet itself, but also the ribbon with all of the commands preset. Wow. And in your code, you can adjust and limit whatever functionality you like. Uh, if you don't need the user interface, but do need to read and write XLSS file, SLX files, you can manage everything in code via the spreadsheet API. Um, in version 20.1, uh, we have a vastly improved uh, print and export rendering engine. So let me quickly show you what that looks like. Uh, I'll hit the pivot table. I'll highlight the information in the pivot table here. Let's just go down to the bottom. Here we are. Uh, go to the page layout, and I'm going to set the print area to that um, uh, selection I made. I'm going to change the the orientation to landscape. And now if I go to File, Print Preview, and drag this over to the right screen, Great. here we are, a Print Preview. And let's export it to a PDF. Uh, why not? And let me save it here. And let me open it in Adobe Acrobat, which is over here. And there we are. Very nice. So it works just nicely. That's uh, an improvement in version 20.1. Uh, it's a huge UI component, and we'll be here all day for us to go into all of its capabilities. So let me just close this preview. And Excel is very, as I said, um, very popular in the business world. And here's a feature that I deserve I think deserves more attention. 
So let me show you how um, people could actually use a spreadsheet for data entry. So what I'm going to do is show a data entry form to explain. So we have a nice invoice here. Uh, at its core, it's no different from a standard Excel type invoice. What this invoice is uh, unique is it's actually a data entry form. Um, so rather than create a data entry form with WinForms, for example, with a bunch of field editors and command buttons and so on and so forth, what we're going to do is just use the spreadsheet for data entry. Um, people know what a data entry form allows you to do. So let me change the sales rep. And um, uh, we could also do things like uh, um, once we have created this um, invoice, um, I'm going to ship it by air and change the terms. But notice the, um, uh, the custom cell editors are something that's baked into the, the spreadsheet control. OK, let me quickly save that. Uh, I'm going to save it over on my desktop and just save whatever it says. And I'm going to open it up in print preview. And there it is in print preview. Um, a normal invoice that you can print off or Yeah, very uh, cool. Now, one final demo before I get to DirectX and GDI, uh, which is very important for WinForms. Simple invoice we just saw, maybe a profit and loss report, yes, or even a vehicle inspection, inspection report. The kind of things you can do with our report um, component. The interesting thing about our report component is it's also available in WPF and in our web set of components. They all in, um, include a Visual Studio designer, a document viewer for each platform, and an end user report designer. Let me just quickly show you the end user report designer. Here's the balance sheet example. Let me click on designer to bring up the designer. And it's the interesting thing about this is it's yet again a control that you can incorporate inside your own applications. Mm. Um, you do not have to run a separate application. This is available. Um, so let me just drag a text field over here and add it to the form, change the label to say hello world. I can change the background color. Notice over here we have a um, property uh, editor, which is very Visual Studio-like in a sense. Uh, no, we'll keep it to Homer, maybe make it more 18, maybe, maybe bold. And um, let's center it. There we go. And so the report design is an example of the kind of features that you can have with DevExpress WinForms controls. Having just shown you the um, a few of the user interface controls that we have as part of the uh, WinForms um, set of uh, controls, I'd just like to point out within our demo center, we have um, a bunch of uh, indications uh, that you can run these demos either with DirectX or with GDI+. And the reason for us doing that is we have created our own DirectX rendering engine. And Ooh, that's exciting. We started off with the data grid, and we have now added DirectX support to a whole range of different UI controls. So why do this? Why do we think it's a superior option? So yeah, back in the beginning, uh, our WinForms components used GDI or GDI plus for rendering operations. Gave us all of us, all programmers, the ability to draw shapes, text, images at will, anywhere on the screen, but at the expense of some additional complexity and often some poor performance. And if you've ever developed desktop apps with WinForms, you know that GDI Plus was more than good enough for classic desktop enterprise applications. But fast forward a couple of decades since those days, uh, we now have 
uh, 4K displays, uh, high DPI, and so on and so forth. And obviously, GDI Plus has evolved. Um, certain operations are now hardware accelerated. But advanced UI components and modern desktop apps still have to deal with a pixel density that's like eight times higher than when GDI Plus was first created or envisaged. So we had a choice, either live with the performance bottlenecks and the rendering issues or roll our own DirectX rendering engine. And obviously we did that. And uh, now in 2020, all of these different WinForms controls now can render with Direct, oops, DirectX rendering. And that should make them much faster, I would imagine. And exactly. Uh, the performance benefits for controls like our data grid are impressive. Are there also memory benefits, or is it just speed? Uh, it's, there are actually memory benefits. The thing about GDI Plus is it generates the display of the screen, if you like, in normal memory, right. uh, whereas DirectX talks directly to the GPU and that's where the screen is going to be generated. The other thing about um, performance-wise is GDI Plus um, essentially has just one command stream for all applications on the system, whereas uh, DirectX, um, they're all independent command streams to directly to the GPU. So there's lots of different ways that DirectX is um, faster and uh, uses less memory than um, straight GDI plus. Now, I will note that we haven't ditched GDI plus for um, our legacy projects, essentially. Our customers can specify which rendering engine they want to use. And as I mentioned before, our WinForms de demo navigator, as you saw, allows you to select and compare for yourself the different rendering engines. And while we were preparing for this VS uh, Toolbox episode, Robert, uh, we thought of various different ways we could actually show the difference between uh, our controls under DirectX and the equivalent under GDI+. Mm -hmm. And so we recorded a little video to hey. show you the real <laughs> the the stuff real away. You've got recorded videos? I love it. Uh Oh, yeah. Let no one say this speed. show is the same format day, week after week after week. <laughs> we're breaking some ground here. I love it. All right. So we're going to demonstrate with this video. And you can um, have a look at the video yourself. It's at devexpress.com slash directx video. And uh, let me show you the difference between directx and GDI+. Plus. So in this video, we're going to be showing data grid scrolling. We have 80 columns in each grid, and we have 830 rows. On the left-hand side, we have the standard grid view, and on the right, which is already oh, finished, golly. we have the direct X view. And now we're going to do page by page. This is pretty impressive. So the standard grid on the side, left-hand side, and us on the right. Oh, we finished. Holy cow. So that's scrolling uh, from top to bottom yep. in a fraction page of time. Page by page. That's great. Exactly. So there we are. Um, and with the memory uh, improvements, I imagine you can get more, can you have more data in there, more controls in there? We were trying to show with that particular uh, video how quickly uh, DirectX can render you know, more information on the screen and as we're scrolling through the grid. Um, obviously, if you have throw more UI uh, controls on there, uh, there's still a difference going on. Um, awesome. That was a fairly simple uh, demo, if you like. But um, with the, the range of um, controls that we have that do support DirectX now, um, you can add more information within uh, your applications. Charting especially, if you're doing real-time charts, for example, right. uh, DirectX makes a great difference for that kind of uh, feature and um, uh, requirement of your and app. Will there be a lot more coming soon, or have you, you've Obviously. done the most important ones at this point, right? We've also done the most important ones, those which actually render a lot of information or a lot of um, you know, changing information on the screen at once. Those are the places where, uh, obviously, DirectX is going to make 
uh, a great deal more difference. Obviously, DirectX was developed essentially for gaming. So anywhere right. where you're having rapid changes of information being displayed, that's where you're going to see the most effect from um, a DirectX implementation rather than GDO+. Plus. Very cool. Yeah. OK, let me quickly move to our WPF controls, go over a couple of our uh, newest features. OK. Um, cool. We have a lot of parity and feature um, a uh, feature and product parity between WinForms and WPF. So I'm not going to show what I've just shown for WinForms. And uh, so let me, with WPF, let me quickly show you a couple of new uh, controls for WPF that we've uh, implemented. So let me uh, kill off that, uh, start off with WPF. Um, there are a couple I want to show which are uh, quite interesting in a way. Uh, the first one is our um, diagram control. Diagram control uh, is our Visio inspired uh, user interface uh, control for WPF. It's also available in WinForms. And what this gives you is the opportunity to write your application um, and have some kind of uh, diagram. So you can show things like. Uh, uh, flowcharts within your application. Uh, for example, your standard looking flowchart. We all remember these from you know when yeah. we were learning how to program plan. Uh, that's always a, an interesting one. I'd hate to actually work in this particular office, but it's um, a database diagram. What are all it's those armchairs behind that person? It's like <laughs> it's like coding in front of a live audience of your peers. <laughs> uh, the interesting thing about the database diagram is you can show, um, and here we're showing a, a pan and zoom effect within our mm -hmm. uh, diagram control, so you can concentrate on a particular area within your uh, own particular um, database schema and so on and so forth. Or chart, that's always a good fun thing. So the diagram control uh, is been improved with version 20.1. And uh, I think, yeah, it's, it's good fun. We also have a des designer as well, so you can incorporate that within your uh, application. So you don't have to use, if you like, our own designer. So we have some basic shapes you can put in there. Um, let's put in an ellipse. Notice how there, we have these alignment uh, things going on so that uh, you can line up your shapes nicely. There was a connector options. So let me um, um, add a connector there and a connector there and so on and so forth. Um, so designer for WPF as well as the um, diagram control itself. Another great one to show off is a Gantt control. Um, we all know what a Gantt control is, uh, especially if you're doing some kind of project. Um, we have this kind of ability to be able to plot out who's going to do what and when and who they're relying on to finish first and, and so on and so forth. Uh, the nice thing about this is it's, Gantt charts are not just for projects. You could also do, as we've done here, we're emulating uh, some website downloading and installing a whole bunch of JavaScript and images and what have you. Again, it's a Gantt chart, so we're showing here uh, a real-time update of the Gantt chart to show, just like you have in, um, your developer tools in your browser and so on and so forth. So that was the Gantt chart. Um, and uh, the pivot grid, quickly show you, we're doing some Excel-style filtering across all of our grid-based uh, components, whether it's WinForms or WPF. And as you see down here, uh, this particular demo is showing just body style in, with sedan and sport utility vehicle. If I nip up to the body style, it has a little uh, filter icon there. And just in a kind of Excel style format, I can then say, oh, I want to show all pickup. And notice as I click pickup, the grid, the pivot grid actually refreshed with um, that particular filter. So we have pickup sedan, sport utility vehicles, and so on and so forth. I can, if I want to uh, turn off the filter, show everything, turn on the filter again, or I can edit the filter in a more um, visual style, if you like, of uh, 
um, you know, nice. to create your filters and so on and so forth. And that is essentially all I really want to show you with regard to WPF. Obviously, there's a lot more to WPF and wind forms. Uh, but that is pretty much fantastic. It. Yeah, absolutely. That's a, a great overview of the controls, uh, some of them that have obviously been in there for forever, some new. I love the DirectX support that's really going to yep. speed things up. We'll have in the show notes links to, of course, your website, to the free 30-day right. trial, um, also how people can get their free version of Code Rush. Thank you guys so much for that. Of course, and I and, hope everyone enjoys it. <laughs> and this has been awesome. Uh, people can sign up for newsletters and get... Uh, get told what's happening, I assume? Yes, you'll be able to sign up for newsletters and the like at our website. All right. Express.com. Yes. Thanks so much, Julian. This has been awesome. A lot of fun. Thanks for coming on the show. And thank you, Robert. Uh, thank you for inviting me and uh, oh, Dev Express, of course. And uh, see you next awesome time. Awesome demo. See you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox. Mm -hmm.